Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and today we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in April of 2020, which is like crazy to me because April went by so fast, but like April 1st seems like so long ago, so like bear with me if I struggle to remember some details from like the books I read back in the beginning of April. I read 14 books this month, which is pretty good for me considering like March was when I got out of my reading slump. So like 14, you know, I'm here for that number. Like I'm happy with it. Without further ado though, let's just talk about the books that I read. All right, so the very first book that I read in April was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, and this was a reread for me, and wow, it was so good. I loved it more the second time, I think especially because the first time I had genuinely, like I knew I loved this book and I knew I loved like the relationships formed in it, but I forgot a lot of what happened, especially kind of the main plot twisty type things at the end of this book I had forgotten about, so I loved rereading it in April and now hopefully I will not forget them because I plan on reading the third and final book this month of April. But if you don't know, this is the sequel to A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. In this series, we follow Feyre. I feel like I've talked about this book so much on my channel, so, and I feel like a lot of people already know what the book series is about, so I'm just gonna very briefly just throw it at you. Feyre is a girl in the human lands and she kills a wolf that ends up to be a fae that she obviously then killed. And because of that, she is taken from the human, like, where the humans live and into the Fae world and kind of as like retaliation. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, at least the first book is, and from there it becomes so much more. This is a young adult fantasy novel, but by young adult I mean new adult, and by new adult I mean adult, because stuff happens in this book series. I mean y'all probably no, but it's so good. I love the relationships. I don't have too, too much to say on this because it was a reread and I read it at the very beginning of the month, but I have never read the third book in the series, so I'm very excited to read that in May. So I ended up giving this a four stars. I, I mean, I get it. This series is very like hit or miss. You either love Sarah J Mass or you're just not a fan literally at all. So I'm a fan. The next book I read was Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I love this book so much. So this is the second book in the Infernal Devices series, which is a prequel series to the Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. Again, I've talked about these a lot and everyone in booktube talks about them a lot. Everyone in life talks about them, but Shadow Hunters, they're kind of like demon fighters and that's all there is to it, really. There's just stories within that world, and this happens to be one of them. This series is set in the 1800s in London, so, like, that's fun. First of all, I gave it a four stars. Love this book. The timing in this for the reveals, so, like, obviously, like, there's little plot twists and little things that you learn, because there's obviously questions in the series that you need answered and so any type of reveal or anything like that I just thought was so like well timed well done in that regard and I loved it because like it had you on your feet and then like you would be good and then it would do it again I thought it was really well done with how like the changing of perspectives will leave you on a cliffhanger like something will happen and then you're like oh my god what happens next but then it switches to another perspective and like you don't get that answer right away which I love it goes along with the timing great timing there there is a love triangle in this series and I don't love it I don't hate it at least in this book but I thought it was like pretty much like the best you could do a love triangle I'm not the biggest fan of like the love triangle trope but I think the series does it well so there's that the next book that I read is a similar one and that is City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare this is the fifth book in the Mortal Instrument series so like I said the Infernal Devices is obviously a prequel to this series and in this series we follow Shadow hunters in New York City in like modern times. I gave this a four stars. So The Mortal Instruments has never been my favorite series, but I've always, you know, been like a fan. Like I enjoy it. But like it takes a lot for me to give these high ratings. Just like it does not take a lot for me to give the Infernal Devices high ratings. Those are so well done. But her writing improved so much for this book. I ended up giving us a four stars. I loved this book. This was a reread, so Clockwork Prince was also a reread for me. I loved it so much more this time. I think whenever I read it back whenever it first came out, I just was reading it because it was like a new Shadowhunter book and I wanted to read it. But now I'm like actually interested in what happens because of this book. Like this made me care again. This is obviously way better than City of Fallen Angels, which is the fourth book, which is 
a filler book and not good. I said it. Compared to the rest, like the earlier books in this series, I thought that the character development and the pacing was so much better. I also noted that this was not as dialogue heavy as the other Mortal Instruments books I felt were. Yeah, I gave it a four stars. I loved it. I am very excited to read City of Heavenly Fire because I feel like people rate City of Heavenly Fire higher than they normally rate this book. So if I gave this a four stars, I'm excited. Alrighty, so the next book I read was my first five stars of the month, and that was The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. Um, I probably would have never picked this up if it wasn't for Alcrate. This is the Alcrate exclusive edition with like stunning sprayed edges. They're all reflecty and glittery. We love that. I had never read a Marie Lu book before. I loved this book so much. Her writing is so magical. I literally while reading it I just kept thinking wow I cannot wait to read this to like a like my kid one day. If that's not the most wholesome, just magical thing ever, I don't know what is. It just felt nostalgic, like an old fairy tale that you would read, and I just adored it. But we follow Nanarol, who is the sister of Mozart, and they are children in this book. She really wants to be a composer. She loves playing the piano. She like really spends all her time doing it. During their time though, it was like frowned upon for women to be composers. So she really knew that she didn't have a future as it as like an adult. So she was kind of eating it up as a kid cause she could do it and she loved it. But she is just always facing the fact that her father wants her to be a good wife and just get married. And one day she and her brother stumble upon this magical world and this fairy, I believe he is, something. He's some magical being. They meet him and he says that he can give her what she wants. He can help her become a composer and become immortalized because she does not want to be forgotten whenever she dies in the future and it's like crazy that she's a kid thinking about that but anyways his only like request is that he'll help her but she has to help him with something too and the story just goes on from there and it is so good just so magical like literally the best word to describe this book is magical like I just loved it so much. So the next book that I read I actually do not own. I got it on audiobook on, I believe, Libby, and I listened to it while at work, and I adored it, and that was I Wish You All the Best by Mason Dever. Mason Dever. So this book follows Ben, who is a non-binary high school student. This is not a spoiler. It literally begins this way, and it's sort of in the summary too, but Ben tries to come out to their parents in the very beginning of the book, and it does not end well for them. They end up getting kicked out of the house, and so that is definitely like a trigger warning, just, you know, not being accepted, especially by families. Anyway, but Ben ends up going to live with their sister who they are estranged with like they have not spoken to in like 10 years because their sister left early on so Ben ends up going to live with their sister and then obviously transfers to school out there to finish up their senior year and at the new school they meet Nathan who is like this really outgoing guy and they develop a friendship and then eventually Ben is just kind of basically the story is Ben trying to become more comfortable you know not only at this new school facing new people but just also kind of accepting themselves especially after just getting like kicked out of their house not accepted by their own family so the book is very pro therapy and we love that definitely some like trigger warnings with like suicidal thoughts and underage drinking and things like that overall just a really well done book. I gave it a four stars. I loved it. Yeah, just a really cute story on top of like all of the deeper things that are involved in the book. Highly enjoyed it. I listened to it on audio. The audiobook was great. It was really quick. I think I read it in literally a day. So, alrighty. So then after I wish you all the best, I was in a contemporary mood and I picked up Dear Evan Hansen by Val Emick. Emich? Emich? Not sure how to pronounce the last name. If you don't know, this is a novelization of the Broadway show Dear Evan Hansen, which if you don't know is my favorite show of all time. I obviously then ended up loving this. I mean, I guess it's not obvious, but I listened to this on audio, which like would definitely recommend the audiobook for this. It's so good. It has like little like intermixed kind of sound clips from the Broadway show, uh, like the songs from the show, so love that for the audiobook. Dear Evan Hansen follows Evan Hansen, who is just a really socially awkward high schooler. Super awkward, but like, I love him. Basically, 
his not friend, but this guy he knows at school ends up committing suicide through like a series of unfortunate events. Evan ends up telling this lie that he was friends with Connor, the kid that committed suicide, and it just spirals out of control from there where people like believe that they were friends and he has to like make up all this stuff, kind of explaining to people that they were friends when they really weren't, but he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Evan always has like the best intentions. I ended up loving this. I gave it a four stars. But my only thing is, I think you would really only enjoy this if you already were a fan of the show first. I think you would miss a lot of that, like the little like subtleties from the show, you would just miss it and I'm not sure if you would enjoy it as much then. This also features like some deleted scenes that they were gonna have in the show but obviously got then cut and this has them in there which is like great as like a fan of the show you kind of get that like extra little treat for you. So if you are a fan of the show I would recommend this. If you haven't seen the show or haven't listened to it but you've read this please let me know your thoughts because I would love to hear them because I think I just have like a biased opinion of it since I am a fan of the show. So the next book I read was a super just quick read for me and that was the life-changing manga of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I'm assuming you've heard of Marie Kondo. Kondo, Kondo. She has a Netflix series, she has a book, she has like every media of this life-changing art of tidying up. This is the manga version of that. I ended up giving this a three stars. It was a super quick read. Basically, I, I mean, I haven't read the book. I've only seen like two episodes of the Netflix show, but like once you watch one or just listen to her concept, in my opinion, you get the gist of it pretty quickly. And the manga does like a good job of giving the gist of it. There is like a intermixed little side plot in the overall story and I enjoyed it. It was like cute little romance intermixed with it, which was fun. And then especially like with the manga style, I liked that aspect of it. But some of her recommendations for tidying up, I just felt were so like, not misguided, but just one-sided. For instance, she is, there's a whole part where they're talking about books and she mentions how if you have a book that you haven't read or you don't plan on reading like right now, you need to get rid of it because someday never comes. Like, oh, I'll read that someday. No, that day will never come in her eyes. And I'm like, clearly you are not a booktuber because someday will eventually come. And if it doesn't, then you get rid of the books. But like, there's nothing wrong with having books. Also, books can be decorations. Not only if you love the book or if you haven't read the book. Like, if you think it's beautiful, like, we can have it on display. Like, it can be a form of decoration. I'm just saying. Also, there was another part whenever she's talking about spices on your spice rack and how you shouldn't have them out when you're cooking. Like, you should have them in a specific place and then while you're cooking, should be able to take that out and then put it right back. And I'm like, that is not convenient. As someone who loves to cook, I just get all my spices, put them right next to where I'm going to be cooking, have them ready for me, maybe open, and then as I'm cooking, I just add them, put them back, and then I put them back at the end. Like, that is not hard, and I don't find that untidy at all. Maybe if you end up leaving the spices out forever, then that's untidy, but... This book, like, while I was reading it, let me tell you, it got me, like, heated. I was getting, like, so mad at some of the things she was recommending, like... Maybe, theoretically, she's right. I just disagreed with her. So I ended up giving this book a three stars. The next book I read was a reread, and that was They Both Died at the End by Adam Silvera. I listened to this on audio. I actually don't own this, even though I think it's one of my favorite books of all time. But I re-listened to this on audio because I was in that contemporary mood and needing a good audiobook, and I adore this audiobook so much. Basically, if you don't know this story, we follow two characters who, first of all, in this world, there's a thing called death cast. On the day you're going to die, they give you a call and say, hey, you're gonna die today, sorry. I'm trying not to spoil anything, but like the title does it for me, but we follow these two guys who get a call from death cast. In this world, there are different things set up for people on their last day, so you can, there's like different apps where you can like meet a last friend, you can like hook up for one last time or for the first time, you can go to these like fun arcade type things like adventure parks and stuff like that. It's just this really cool world. We follow these two guys who meet over the last friend app and I just love it so much. It's one of those stories that like while you're reading it, you just like just want to like affect the story. Like you want to be like, no, don't do this. Or you want to change what happens because you know what's going to happen. And like you just get so invested and like, oh, 
I really recommend it. Definitely pick this up if you love contemporaries and also like it definitely is a contemporary but obviously has these like dystopian sci-fi. It has those type of elements like intermixed with it because of this death cast system. I love it. All right so the next book I read was All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This is the Alcray edition so it's slightly different on the cover and it's beautiful and it's sort of blue sort of green but like I decided it counted for the blue theme. I adored this book. I ended up giving it a four stars though. I I think I want to reread this at some point and potentially I'll give it a five stars though. I just think from the first time reading it, the beginning is sort of info dumpy. Sorry, I just realized I never explained what it is. But basically in this we follow Amora, who is the princess of this kingdom, Visidia. Each of the islands in this kingdom has like a different magic. The people on them can only perform a certain type of magic and hers is soul magic, which is the most dangerous magic because of this like creature that is involved with their family um, and that specific type of magic. So anyways, in order to become the queen, she has to perform this ritual. It does not go the way that she wants it to and because of that she is kind of banished they determine that she is not worthy of becoming queen along the way of being banished she meets a pirate and he basically claims that he can help her sort of similar to the kingdom of back he can help her if he she helps him a little bit and they go on an adventure from there. There's mermaids, there's like different types of magic which are really fun. Kind of reminded me, like they're elemental magic almost kind of reminded me of the last airbender like just a little bit but i liked it there's also a love triangle like it's like a friendship love triangle i don't know how to describe it but i'm like a big fan of like the three well actually the four main characters in this i feel like a lot of young adult fantasy follows kind of the love route like eventually they're gonna fall in love love is all love is first love is great love is strong love is smart love is important that's basically most young adult books right now, but this I felt followed friendship first and then love and I adored that aspect of it and the magic system is really cool. The only reason I did not give this a five stars is because it's a fantasy adventure book. There's many different little adventures within so it's like okay we have to get from A to B. Cool, we got that. Next, we're gonna go from B to C. Cool, got that. And it's just not my cup of tea with like a book. It's a very classic like way of doing things. So I don't think it's necessarily bad. It's just not my favorite type of book to read. With everything else, I ended up giving it a four stars. But if I do reread this soon, I might end up giving it a five stars just because I really, I gotta say, I really did enjoy the characters and the magic system and I can't stop thinking about it. So therefore, it, it must be a five star. I don't know, but right now, giving it a four star. So the next book I read was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I got this on Libby. I listened to the audiobook and read it physically. This is my first Taylor Jenkins Reid book and I adored it so much. I gave it a four stars. This book follows Hannah who is like I think she's 29 actually, but she's 29 and she feels kind of lost in life. She keeps moving around from city to city. She keeps trying to find like the perfect city for her. She was with this guy who's married and at first they were like together, but she didn't know that he was married and then she finds out he's married, but then she like continues this relationship with him. Eventually she's like, nope, but she moves back to LA in like the beginning of the book. I don't want to spoil it because I think it is kind of like in the summary, but like I didn't know about this part, like this aspect of the book when I went into it and then when it happened I was like oh my god so I'm not gonna spoil that but basically the book kind of follows how decisions can affect your life and like I think about that all the time and sort of like this fate like is it fate is it because of the decisions I made I don't know and the book very much deals with that and I love that concept also just Hannah is like so relatable and I adore the relationship so much like I ship them so hard. I don't normally do that in books. I mean, there are times when I ship someone, obviously, but this, like, I was like, yes, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, this is an adult contemporary romance. More contemporary than romance, but oh, I'm so good. So good. 10 out of 10 would recommend, except I gave it a five. I, I gave it a four star. Honestly, I don't know why I gave it a four star, just because I think fundamentally it's a four star, but like, I adored this book so much. One reason that I think I might have given this a four star is that she talks about cinnamon buns so much, and I'm like, if I hear cinnamon bun one more time, I'm gonna explode. So, like, that knocked it down a stuff. I, not actually, but like, it was kind of annoying. Alrighty guys, the next book I read, this is my least favorite book, maybe of all time, and that is 
What If It's Us by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera. I gave this a two star. I listened to it on audio. I hated this book so much. I love Adam Silvera. He wrote They Both Die at the End. Becky Albertelli wrote Love, Simon, and I love that book. I have owned this book for so long. I just never got around to picking it up. And then obviously in my contemporary mood, I was like, ooh, it's time. It also has some blue in it. So I was like, perfect. Hated it. Hated it. Also did not even know that this is like a book kind of based, not based on, but like has a lot of influences from Dear Evan Hansen. Like What If It's Us is like a lyric from one of the songs and I did not pick up on that until I obviously picked up the book. And you'd think I would love that because I love Dear Evan Hansen, but no, this was not good. We follow two boys in New York City. They meet each other at a post office where the one character is trying to send off his ex's items because like there are a bunch of things left over from their breakup. He doesn't want them anymore so he's trying to send them away and then he meets this guy. They end up like forming a relationship. They are not compatible at all. At all! Arthur and Ben do not belong together at all and I think Yes, it is like realistic in that regard that like I think whenever you're young and you're in high school you kind of just are drawn to like certain people and it's a lot of lust over love. It does not have to be a book. Like I just was not, I was not having it. They literally do not belong together. They go on like five first dates because they keep effing it up and I'm like if you effed up the first date and the second and the third you clearly just don't belong together. I kind of just ended up hate reading this. Like I would have DNF'd it, but I was like, no, I need to keep reading because I hate it so much. I'm normally not like that, like at all, but this just made me feel things that I've never felt before in a bad way. Also, there were just so many pop culture references and you'd think I would love that, but I hated it. It just felt like these old people trying to be hip and cool and like throwing all these things at you. And I was just like, please stop. Yeah, gave it a two star, not a fan. We're moving on. The next book I read wasn't up from there and that was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I ended up giving this a four star, but this is another book that I can't stop thinking about, so I'm like, is it a five star? Maybe, I don't know. If you don't know though, this is a young adult fantasy standalone, which like we don't see a lot. It follows Elizabeth who works in a library. The libraries though are not like our libraries. They're full of magical books, grimoires, the like most dangerous grimoire gets like out. But through like a series of events, she kind of end up, ends up getting blamed for this. But then she meets Nathaniel, who is a sorcerer, and the sorcerers in this world, they get their magic from demons and like summoning demons. So like that was really cool. She's just trying to like set the world right again and learning things about herself and about the world along the way. Fundamentally, more than any of the other books I mentioned on this list where I've said the same thing, this is like a five star read, in my opinion. Like the writing is just so so good. The imagery she uses to create the world is like breathtaking. Um, I adored it. I also adored the three main characters. Again, a kind of maybe a theme for the month I find it, but there's sort of like this like, not love triangle, but like friend love triangle, friendship triangle. And I was so here for it. I adored it so much. Also, there's a cat. I love the cats. So I just loved this book. I want to reread it. I gave it a four stars this time around because I think at some point I was a little confused in like the halfway point. I just kept going and eventually just forgot about my confusion. But I think if I were to reread it, I would not be confused. And therefore, I would enjoy it a lot more than I already enjoyed it a lot. So four stars for now, but definitely want to reread this at some point. Unfortunately, it's a standalone, which is like a good thing and a bad thing because I don't have to wait for anything but also I just love the characters so I want more. Oh wow I'm just looking at my cop list and I did end up giving Sorcery of Thorns five stars. Well okay five star read. All right the next book I read was also on audio and that was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it a four stars. It is a adult contemporary following Eleanor Oliphant who is like the most ordinary person in the entire world like just so ordinary that she's then not ordinary kind of one of those situations in the end i like enjoyed it a lot and i would recommend it but i think in the beginning like there are these moments where i just hated eleanor she was like annoying in how ordinary she was and like her thought processes i was like oh my god stop but it ended up having like this little like twist in it kind of and once that happened i loved it it eventually kind of has this like pro therapy message which like 
Again, we love that. But yeah, it just has twists. Once that happens, you kind of like rework your thinkings of her. Basically, the story just follows her in her ordinary life. In the story, we learn about why she is the way that she is. She has this friendship with this guy. And yeah, definitely has some trigger warnings of like alcoholism and suicidal thoughts again. So take that with a grain of salt. But I ended up really liking it. The relationship between her and mother her and mother. Her and her mother is like a key part of the story. I hate her mother so much, so much. I mean, you're supposed to, and I just, I do. I hate her. The only notes I had written on this were from before the twists in the story, so ended up just really enjoying it. The final book that I read this month, or last month, was Becoming by Michelle Obama, and this book is so good. It's so good. It's so good. If you have not read this, just pick it up. If you don't know, obviously this is Michelle Obama's memoir and yeah, I gave us the five stars. This this hands down the easiest five star I think I've ever given a book. It made me cry like five times. I listened to this on audio. 10 out of 10 literally would recommend the audiobook for this because she herself narrates it. So felt almost like listening to a podcast. In the very beginning, I remember being like, you know, I am enjoying this, but like, I don't know how this is like five star quality because it starts out whenever she's like a kid and then she's like growing up from there. You know, it's enjoyable, but I enjoyable, but like, I don't get five star vibes. And then as she gets older, I was like, oh my God, the five star vibes are like everywhere. It's just so, so good. The thing I think that is the best about this book is that Michelle was capable of making the life lessons build upon each other in just this like perfect way. One life lesson will lead into another one and then stack up from there. It's a better way for life lessons to stick with you, the reader, and not just like be like, oh yeah, you're right, and then move on from there, and then oh, another life lesson. Like, because they build upon each other, it kind of sticks with you, and like the message just resonates more with you, if that makes sense. Even if you do not agree with her politically or Barack Obama politically, you can still really, really enjoy this book. I think if anything, it will not necessarily make you switch political views, but just maybe understand where she or Barack are coming from at certain times. I loved being able to see kind of behind the scenes of her and Barack during the presidency. Like that was super, super cool. Just definitely go pick this up and definitely listen to the audiobook if you enjoy audiobooks, because even if you don't enjoy audiobooks, I think you would enjoy it. It's just so so well done. That concludes all of the books that I read in April. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what your opinions were on them because obviously I would love to talk about the books that I just read. Let me know if you shared an opinion, if you disagreed with me. Overall, it was a pretty successful reading month and I am so happy with how it turned out. And honestly, though I had my worst rating in like a long time this month, I also had some of the best books I have ever read this month. So it was a successful month. We're here for it. I will say I will never be making another TBR based on color because it wasn't restrictive, but whenever there was a book that like Clockwork Princess, the sequel to Clockwork Prince, I really wanted to read it. And I was like, ah, I can't, I have to wait till next month because it's not blue. I still enjoyed myself. Yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good day, evening, month, night. Why do I keep saying month in all my videos? I mean, yes, have a good month, but Anyways, stay safe out there, guys. I will see you in my next one. You